Okay, Sal, tell me the story of the born again beauty. Okay, so I'm just bringing up this Washington Post article. Anyone can Google it. So I try to, um, for some of these, I just try to get things that are publicly available. And also so you, you all can investigate it yourself. Cheryl Pruitt's Born Again American Beauty, written by Carla Hall in the Washington Post, May 27th, 1980. And I know this is early in my Christian walk, and this was an inspiring story. This is a little longer, uh, and it's written from a secular perspective. So this won't have a lot of the kind of the warm feel that you may get from a, um, if it were told by a Christian author. So just take it for what it's worth. But it's also good from a secular perspective because it's like, okay, it's still kind of hard to, to deny that something happened to someone. Yeah. And, and even if it's almost written with cynicism, it almost makes it more credible, if you know what I mean, because it's not evan meant to be evangelistic. This is meant to be just straightforward re reporting. Cheryl Pruitt went through the windshield of the car she was riding in when it collided with a neighbor's car 12 years ago. I had 100 stitches, said Pruitt, now 23, and Miss America. Her soft smile, just the shadow of the brilliant toothy gleamer she wears most hours of the day. Emergency room stitches, they were done in a, in a hurry. My entire mouth has been sewn back together. My chin has been sewn back together. My forehead has been sewn back together. See this line? Her finger presses past... Her fingers pass gently over each part of her face that she mentions, and she points to the barely noticeable vertical indentation that runs down the axe, that run down the middle of her forehead. There are no other signs of the accident. Wait, now, was she Miss America before this happened, or she was Miss America after this happened? After. Wow. After. Her face was, I, I know this because um, we have to pan to the picture of my mom here. Oh, wait, <laughs> that's, a, that's a background. My mother's face was cut in half in, in an automobile accident and the plastic surgeons rebuilt it. But even then that was a miracle, you know, um, could thank God for her providence, but Imagine that her body was crushed, but there's more to this story that's just compelling. I'll just read this again. My, so she was about 11 years old at this time. So she's oh, 23, okay. Sorry, so that was 12 years that. ago. Yeah. She was 11 mm -hmm. years old. My entire mouth has been sewn back together. My chin has been sewn back together. My forehead has been sewn back together. See this line? Her fingers pass gently over each part of her face that she mentions, and she points to the barely noticeable vertical indentation that runs down the middle of her forehead. There are no other signs of the accident. Her makeup is heavy with foundation, almost theatrically thick. Her blush is rougey. Her lipstick is very red. Her brilliant blue eyes overshadowed by long, sticky, mascara lashes. But... Like a winsome Flannery O'Connor heroine, she survived it all. She survived the stitches, suffered through having one leg crushed in the accident, which made it two inches shorter than the other, and, and through most of two inches, two inches, and through most of her high school years, she walked with a limp, with a limp. That was before she went to a faith seminar years later where she was healed and the leg grew, she says, two inches that very day. It all seems far away and fluttery now, as she arrived here yesterday for a Memorial Day service to promote a USO tour. But she talks about the accident because she is now Miss America, a title she holds until the next pageant in September. And she is also a born again Christian, like the rest of her family, which includes two brothers and a sister. The Pruitts are from Choctaw County, Mississippi, where they once ran a country store. Now they mainly sing and tour the country with Cheryl. Singing is her talent. 
I, I actually visited Choctaw County because there was a nice casino there. I'm sorry, I just had to mention that. She travels with her Bible and her alarm clock, her music, her crown, her gowns, her dresses, her shoes, and her purses, two full suitcases. And it makes it all makes sense in her strange world where the discipline and religion and the family values and the little girlish Southern twang run into the nonstop conveyor belt of commercial appearances and singing engagements and, and nights in Las Vegas where Glenn Campbell calls you up from the audience onto the stage to sing a song with him because you're Miss America. I take my guidance from scripture, she says, settling on the sofa of a white Washington Hilton hotel yesterday. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. I guess I've gotten some criticism from spiritual leaders all over. You get letters from everyone, but this is the world where people need to hear that God loves you. They hear it in church. They don't expect to hear it where I am. I feel, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel that's why I can justify doing what I'm doing. That's one way I justify it. As for the seemingly obvious conflict between being a religious person from the rural, rural South and the object of all that visual cheesecake inspection, she has an answer. People ask me how I could wear a swimsuit in the pageant and be a Christian, she said. She leaned forward, her jaw set, her eyes narrowing. I tell them, if you'd been a cripple for six years, you'd love to wear a swimsuit. She sat back, her closed mouth smile triumphant. When she was in high school, a doctor told her she probably would not be able to bear children because her, of her leg problem. Uh, I think it crushed part of her pelvis or something. Um, there, thereafter, she prayed for months to be healed before she finally went to a faith seminar, as she called it, run by a man named Kenneth Hagen from Tulsa, she said. All day long, my leg, my leg had felt numb and tingly, she said. I think whatever happened to my leg happened during the whole day. The seminar wasn't emotional with screaming and crying and all this, she said. It was very relaxing. I believed God enough to know he'd do it. I was very calm. It was very calm and beautiful. I was feeling very loved. She was standing in front of a stage where the minister prayed over her. She later sat down on the floor and saw that her shorter leg was then the same length as the other. She figures the whole thing took five or 10 seconds. Since the healing, I've been an outspoken Christian, she said. I find people relate to this well. Our whole society is set about around negativism. This is a positive note. Someone can have something good happen to them. She stressed several times that, that when she talks about, uh, what she talks about is the power of positive thinking. This is motivational success. This is a motivational success story, she said, of her healing. The reaction to her story, her leg being healed and growing two inches so that she doesn't limp anymore, is better than you would think, she said. I don't care if they don't believe it. If they're ready to accept it and it helps their life, good. If it doesn't, that's okay. I'm not here to change people's minds. I'm here to show them what works for me, just like Jesus. He didn't push people. I don't have to be pushy either, she said. Pruitt talks a lot about religion at her public appearances, many of which are in churches. She will continue to be booked after her Miss America reign is over to sing, to talk about Christ. She's booked uh, into August 1981, and she has some dates into 1982. Her, her mother handles her post-Miss America bookings. On some of those dates, her brothers and sisters sing with her. She says she and her siblings have traveled around singing for the past 18 years. So she, she and her family have been serving the Lord a long time. Cheryl uses every opportunity to witness that her 28-year-old sister, Paulette, who is traveling with her on this trip. She's asked to explain what that means. She tells people about the Lord, Paulette says. When Cheryl Pruvett lived at home, she went to Salem Independent Church in Choctaw County. Obviously, I don't go now because I'm traveling, she said. And even if I if I were there, I don't know if I'd go. She asked. She is asked why, and she answers with a non-answer. Well, I don't know, she said, because I'm not there. 
After lunch with representatives of all the armed services at Fort Myers mess hall yesterday, she went outside for an hour's worth of photographs. Photographs. She mugged, she links arms uh, with the clean cut, slightly odd men. She giggled and, and wrinkled her nose. Never forgot a name and sometimes gave them little kisses. Oh, I got lipstick on your cheek. She exclaimed to one, wiping it off with her hand. Earlier that morning, Pruitt had sung the national anthem at a memorial service at Arlington Cemetery. Later, she was scheduled to sing at a local veterans hospital. In between, there were constant photographs as she promoted USO shows. She herself will be performing in August in a show making a tour of the Pacific, according to Russell Bice, director of USO shows. She can remember most of what she's done for the three days just past. Anything before that span becomes a blur. Future events are in the hands of traveling companions. There are just two and other officials. I don't try to put it in perspective, she said, smiling. I just do one thing at a time. They tell me what to do and I do it, she laughed a little. She loves being Miss America. She loves seeing the average person and seeing how they react. And there's, and there always, and always there was a smile. Um, and there's more there, but I think the essentials uh, uh, were told. Um, th there is something really incredible about this. After she got healed, and she was considered old for running for Miss America. I know 23 seems awful young, but God put it in her heart. She was talented. She was made whole. And she said, well, okay, well, I'll just enter a beauty pageant. You know, you have a chance to do talent. And she won. And just like, okay, why don't I keep trying? And she was runner up. She became Miss Mississippi and just like, okay, so this girl that had her face shattered, cut in half and healed. And she was limping around high school. She, a lot of people could verify. I, I mean, I wanted, I'm mean, like, her family was in the accident. They knew she limped around. Uh, there were doctors so I, th that treated her. So if, you know, I have to think what impact does this have on her community? And, and, and uh, the song that she sings when she was on her singing tour was, I'm a miracle, Lord. I'm a miracle. It's a beautiful song. And, you know, she sings it with her, all her heart. And she said, all right, God, you know, uh, she said, I, you know, if, if I win this, if I become Miss America, this is a platform for him. And so, yeah, the guys are lusting after her, all those women in bathing suits, but she's saying, hey, you know, if you had a if you had a, a leg shorter and it was crushed and God healed it, you're glad to share. And um, it's amazing. There's this verse in Song of Solomon. Uh, your your hips are curved like jewels. They are the work. They are the masterpiece of a master craftsman. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah, that's to me that is just that shows you not only the power of God, yeah, but his character, the things that he delights in. Yeah. Because it's it's sort of a joke, right? That somebody that got that messed up physically yeah. could end up becoming like this icon of beauty. Icon of beauty. Yeah. Amen. That is just that's 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 wonderful, you know, and I'm sure that there were, I mean, wow, just as you're like entering adolescence, you know, getting your whole face torn apart and then, you know, imagine what that was like for her as a teenager. And, you know, this is the time when you're really finding out, you know, who you are and, and your appearance is so important you know, yeah. it, and then, but, but having to live with all these scars and the limp and everything and kind of, I can imagine like the, 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 
what what you'd be feeling as a hearing all this bad news, you know, experiencing this physical deformity and then being told you won't be able to have children and kind of wondering like, what's my life going to be like? And then to have God come in and do this incredible reversal, you know, incredible reversal. It's just shows you the character of our God. And I wanted to share something. It's also kind of sobering. Um, We had an English poetry class. It was at the time I thought it was a required class for my elective requirements. It turned out not to be. And I, I was really disappointed with that whole poetry thing, but I made a poem about her. Um, and there was one other Christian girl uh, that was in the class, and she knew the story, and she was so excited when I read that poem. She said, I have that book. And um, But the sobering thing was no one else was interested. I'm just like, you've heard this miracle, and just no interest and i sort of get it it's like well the attitude is like i haven't seen it myself i'd be more willing that's usually that's one and it's like the world is such a bad place why doesn't god just heal everyone and all the problems go away and so this is what we cover you know on especially my channel evidence and reasons the pro the whole center of this is Proverbs 25 2. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings to search it out. And God doesn't make this so in your face that you're forced to believe. But this is what's happened is one, if he has started to work a little miracle in your life, there's that spark. It's like, yeah, that wasn't, that seems beyond coincidence. And you have the yeah. suspicion he could be there. You're more willing to. To believe it and then you meet all these people uh the things that i think are really amazing is people that are christians you think why you have so much going for you what you know why are you suffering persecution like charles duke you you made it to the moon why are you hanging out with prisoners and you're like i think god really did work a miracle in this life he has yeah. you know I mean, if I were an astronaut, I'd be flying airplanes all weekend. You know, I wouldn't be hanging out in the prisons. And yeah. so, and so, these stories are out there, guys. If if the God if God has laid it on your heart, and so, if I may just share a word that I that is often, you know, when I interact with people, to the viewers, you know who you are. If God is, if you sense God has been working. In your life just like Mitsuyo Fujita he's like why was I spared it seems like there's a meaning and all this meaningless you know and all this death around me and I'm the one that's spared and so I know there are people out there that might be reflecting it's like yeah there just seems to be a destiny for me and I'm seeing miracles in my life and so the verse that comes to mind is it says today if you hear his voice don't harden your heart Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Uh, I've seen people that will say that to me, that they feel God working in their lives. And I hear accounts of people that hardened their heart, and then that was it. You know, God, you know, they never were able to be turned. So this is, you know, I'm just saying as I, I hear this, you know, as I shared that story in that English class, I was just kind of disheartened. I said, don't you want to seek after God? Don't you have any interest? I mean, this is hope for you. Even if it sounds far-fetched, do you have anything better? And I, to this day, that's what I see. And so, you know, the kingdom of God is like treasure hidden in the field. You have to look. And so if God's putting it on your heart to search, we're trying to provide these testimonies because uh, I think they're a letter from Christ. Do you have your Bible? Can you share 1 Corinthians Maybe Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians three, two through three. You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. So we've shared these testimonies of God's work. 
because it is a letter from Christ to us in the present day. And we delight to share, uh, declare, and glorify God for the great things he's done. His own self for heavenly food.